Hello and welcome to the Eras Tour episode of Clappercast. I'm your host as always, Carson Tamar, and today, to celebrate Taylor's version of the Eras Tour releasing on Disney+, Plus, alongside celebrating just one year of the Eras Tour, myself and Paul Price, two pretty big Swifties, are going to be looking at Taylor Swift's career one era at a time, looking at the concert films that went along with the era, plus looking at their place within the Eras Tour itself, Paul and I discuss the highs and lows of Miss Swift's career alongside building our own Eras tour to determine what we would keep and what we would change. We love you here at the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking. And without further ado, let's get to the Eras tour. I'll be your host this evening. My name is Taylor and welcome to the Eras tour. Okay, Paul, and to start off today's episode, I would love to first just get a temperature check where we are with Blondie, with Miss Swift. Um, Are you a fan from the beginning? Are you a new Taylor Swift fan? Where are you? I mean, obviously you are a Taylor Swift fan, not just being here, but I think you've kind of physically presented yourself (laughs) as possibly being a Swift fan. Um, Um, Yeah. Go for it. So um, I was thinking about this over the, especially when we were like going through and I was watching all the documentaries that we watched. Um, the amount of times that Taylor Swift like popped into my life for like a hot second, um, is like really funny because, so I remember in the car with somebody and should have said no came on and we were, you know, this was when it came out and, um, I was like, wow, I really love this song. Then I heard our song also loved that was very into both of those probably didn't even know it was the same person. If we're honest, um, then love story came out and i was like a little anal kid at that time so uh the fact that it wasn't actually romeo and juliet drove me insane i was like what do you mean the dad's fine with it that's not how it goes and i did not realize it's a metaphor at that time i was 14 or 15 um so i was like very annoyed about that then i got to college um and my friends were obsessed with speak now um specifically mean and our and um mine um were like the big ones that they really liked so i heard those a ton and then um red i was almost graduating college not quite um and that one was big for us but we were mostly into it like the meme potential like uh the screaming goat for uh i knew you were trouble and all those kind of things 1989 obviously was huge um reputation was my big one it's still like listed as like my third most listened to album of all time um and i was so big on it and uh then me happened and i fell off girly for the entirety till midnight's came out like i remember i listened to um, Cruel Summer, because originally I thought it was going to be a remake of the song Cruel Summer by Bananarama. Um, it was not. So I was like, I don't care about the song. And then my friend told me to listen to Betty because of the Gaylor aspect that seemed likely when it first released. And then the song that they did with Haim, uh, No Body, No Crime, I had listened to because um, everyone said it was a cool, like, you know, uh, noir kind of like storyline. I was excited to hear that. Um then uh midnights rolled around and i literally bought the vinyl like after the album had released because i was like oh if it's popular i should have it because i like having vinyl um and so that was like the first one i bought and then i like put it on and i was like oh this is this is kind of fun um so then right after that i got like immediately was like i should sign up for the era's tour tickets just to go i guess if I want, you know, if I can, I got tickets. 
And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go. And then from there, over that year, I listened to a bunch of her stuff. And I was like, oh, not only do I know like 60% of this already, just from osmosis. um, Also, I really like it a lot more. Um, So, yeah, that was kind of where we were. What about you? So I was very much so on the outskirts of Taylor Swift for a long time. I remember my sister listening to Love Story. Um, I remember being around for the 1989 era, but like I was never a Swift fan. In fact, I was like, I thought I was not a Swift fan. And then like um, Reputation came out. I remember liking some of the songs, but then like listening to the album got to end game and was like, oh, Taylor, not the vibe. Um, And then Lover, the singles come out. And I maintain that I don't think the singles for Lover are like, that good i think they're probably the weaker part of the album you have me uh you have you need to calm down which i was like very like oh, i don't know about this like <laughs> it was not the vibe so freshman year of college i turn on lover it comes out i think the same week as like i start classes and i'm walking around campus and i'll be honest with everyone this was a hate listen this was me being like i'm gonna tell everyone why taylor switch was bad and then i listened to it and i was like oh actually this album is fire um and then i've been on the train ever since yeah i mean like it's definitely gotten deeper since midnight since eras um spoiler alert me and paul have basically daily texts about taylor swift for like a year now but like i I am definitely (laughs) going back (laughs) um quite a big fan of blondie and most of her works um even now like going back is like debut slaps y'all like we'll get there but like um i'm definitely a big taylor swift fan now so i would say that is my background with swift um i like that's the album that took you out of it made me a swift fan um but that's okay um it was was more and we, we talked about this before it's more that that music video i think was so corny that like to like even the song you were like it was an embarrassing thing to do. You were like, Love. close to. 2019 was also the year Cats release. So I can't say if I was worried about like gonna liking something <laughs> that was controversial, uh, something that was a little Swift. cringy. Speaking of Taylor Swift, we'll get there. Not today, but another day. Um, <laughs> so let's start our journey one era at a time, going through the same uh, set list and same direction as the era's tour itself. Um, we'd want to do that instead of just going chronologically because it's a little bit more fun. And let's start with Lover. Seventh studio album came out August 2019. The first record she made away from Big Machine Records. Um, So this is the first one she's not going to have to re-release or re-record. So let's start the journey through Lover by going back in time. Not that far. Um, Let's talk about the cinematic... um, you know, uh, identity of Lover with her two kind of releases during the time. We have City of Lover, live from Paris. Um, and then you also have Miss Americana, the documentary about the making of Lover. Paul, I want to throw it over to you first. What were your thoughts on these two films? How did they change your appreciation for the album? How did they grow your appreciation for the album? Did you enjoy yeah. them? Um, so I just watched the City of Lover movie, which is funny because I do have the City of Lover vinyl. So, um, (laughs) having listened to that as many times as I have, and then just watching it, it was very weird experience for me because I was like, oh, I I know like how she says certain words, like how you do in the eras to her movie, but like watching it after was a very strange experience. Um, I think that that one is like really good. I think the songs are odd choices almost across the board. Um, it is very much uh her trying to figure out who she is i mean we also have to remember at this point this is the first album where she has left um you know her old recording label and this is her probably trying to figure out like what her singles are um without that guidance that she had beforehand and i think that you can feel that especially with the city of lover which is like you know songs like daylight and you need to calm down and me and um death by a thousand cuts in cornelia street are on there at least but like it is very much a like scattershot um group of the song choices and i think that you see that also in the actual tour which we'll get into a second in eras um and then uh miss americana i had watched before but kind of not a spoiler alert, but how we've watched all of her concert films and all of her documentaries at this point um, to get caught up for this. Watching that again yesterday 
gave me a whole new perspective on um, how I had felt about that film. Previously, I thought it was um, a little, a little pat, a little easy, but watching how clean cut she had been prior and even like watching some old interviews and things like that. And to see her kind of like lay open a lot of stuff that we now just assume is part of the Taylor Swift mythos, um, but was created by that um, particular documentary. I do think it's more impressive in hindsight. I do think it's a little sad though, like that uh, now lover, I think is like one of her best selling albums just in general, but um, it to watch that one and then lover not succeed where she's thinking it's going to succeed. And also because of the pandemic is just a very weird thing to watch. Like, um, especially how much hate reputation gets <laughs> like constant slander, um, which is wild. Yeah. I mean, I really love city of lover. I'm going to be honest. It's like so funny seeing like, obviously we never got lover fest. We never got the lover world tour. Um, so seeing like her in this era, perform these songs and play with them and get used to them on this public stage. Like I really enjoyed it. I also just think like it's put together really well. Um, I really appreciate a lot about that um, experience. Sad we never got the lover fest. I do think though, when talking about the set list it is important to think like she had a world tour coming. She thought it like not that long in a few months. So, like she's, you know, I think trying to find the big ones and then it was the goal and intention was that some of those smaller ones would get their time to shine on the tour. Again, sadly, that didn't yeah. happen. Uh, Miss Americana, I'll be very brief on because I have a full episode on Clappercast um, talking about it. I've been very critical of that film in the past. I thought it was kind of messy, not really that interesting. Going back again, and I watched these in chronological order, even though we're not talking about them in chronological order, seeing Fearless, seeing Red, seeing Speak Now, seeing her build that image and then tear it apart in Miss Americana. Like, I fully agree. It plays so much better when you've had that exposure and you've had, like, I've seen her <laughs> on Journey to, or on the Speak Now, like, uh, video yeah. being like, lol, I go talk to Ellen and I run through haunted houses. Like, I've seen the image she had and then to see how bold it is. And I've never said Miss Americana is not a bold feature. I think any feature that has like your dad being like, don't say you support gay people. Like it's a bold <laughs> effort. Um, but I think it plays incredibly well. Like afterwards, I still have plenty of issues with the film, but like, I do think if you're going to watch it, you need to have that context of who Taylor Swift was um, to really appreciate who Taylor Swift is. Um, so I think both of these, though, are rather strong films. I think especially like live performances, City of Lover is probably one of my favorites. I think also she just picks really good songs to play in an acoustic setting. Um, but jumping forward to well, the era. Actually, I, want, I wanted to pop in. The before. one thing that I wish they would do now, speaking of City of Lover, is it was not just those six songs. It's a whole concert. Right. And I know that that was to uh, those weren't released to keep it away from the uh, you know, getting streams to the old versions. But now that we are through, I think all of the um, ones that are included in um, that movie with their own Taylor's versions, I would kind of like Disney to re-release and they might at this point um, uh, release the whole, the whole s selection of the thing. Um, even with the vinyl, I'm surprised that they didn't just, you know, I love the heart. I think it's really fun. But I kind of wish it had the whole, you know, playthrough of the entire concert in correct order, because these are like butchered in terms of her like set design, um, set list design. But City of Lover, Taylor's version, definitely could yes. see it coming out, like have it be a record store day um, <laughs> release. We'll be there. Um, flash forwarding to the era's tour. Let's discuss the opening act, Act One, Lover, uh, featuring Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince, Cruel Summer, The Man, You Need to Calm Down, Lover, and The Archer. Um, we both attended, to be clear, the era's tour, just for that context. We've both been there. We've seen the film. Um, I will say... For Lover being one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums, and I do think it opens very strong with Miss Americana uh, into Cruel Summer, I think this is probably one of the weaker eras of the album of the tour. Um, mainly, I just like don't love a lot of the songs she chose. I think Lover's really fun, but like I'm not the Archer girly. I could really have just had that not been there. I think the man is cute. You need to calm down is cute, but like when you look at this album, and we'll get into a minute each section. We're going to say what we would have said or what we would have put on the track list. I think that it's just like so many of the best songs of this album are not here. And so many of the mid songs of the album 
are here to where like it's a fun opener but i do think there's more to be done with this section i don't know if you agree with that i i do and i also find it a interesting choice to start a reintroduction kind of tour for taylor with her most politically heavy songs um like you can feel the vibe um, when I've seen the movies, uh, seen it in theaters. You can feel the vibe where the dads and like the the older people are like not having a good time. And you're like, it's such an interesting choice to start with that. Um, I also find those to be the most corny songs. So that's really difficult for me. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the how she leads into the crowd, um, you know, with her um you're making me feel all kinds of excellent right now and all those like moments that it's so funny to go re-watch it in different countries and all this stuff you know all the different versions and it's the same line read but it's so good um i think that's really interesting um especially um with all the different costume changes and things um between the different concerts i know we're specifically talking about the movie but how you know there's an excitement when you find out what jacket and what outfit uh, is going to be part of it. Um, the the man stage, I think, is really well done. I think that the um, way they do the characters is really clever, how they're playing with everyone. Once it hits, you need to calm down. I am really ready for that whole era to end. Um, and I don't have a single moment of fun um, uh, for the rest of it. And I, I want, I've seen it so many times now. And every single time, I'm like, get to Fearless. Uh, I, just I do like Lover. I think the Lover bit is really cute. I think there's I a lot. I really, yeah. I keep Lover in my set list. I don't, overall, I didn't take out things that I don't like, but feel like they're, like, good, you know, um, for the moment. Uh, this was, like, there's a couple in there that I'm just like, Ugh, I get it. I understand it. But, um I think that even the uh, performance with the little dances um, to Lover is a little, I guess, just simple. It's easy. Um, and Lover going into Archer, just they feel very similar. And I would change that out. Um, also, as an aside, I think that if you look at what people love about these co- this concert, um you always hear people talk about two things. Uh, the trans, uh, the transition from uh, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince to Cruel Summer, and then later um, one in Reputation, um, a transition there. And I think that, and with her doing these mashups and having watched pre- previous concerts, I do think that like more mashup-ish kind of things could have happened in here. You know, especially like if you're wanting to shove, you know, you can do the Archer and Lover together. Or, like, you know, figure out other songs that fit well together. And then just be quicker. Um, Because I don't think we need the full song sometimes. And I think that she is clever with that. With, like, you need to calm down just being, like, one verse. Um, But. So what would you put in? What was your set list that you created for Lover? Yeah, so mine doesn't change all that much. Um, I keep it um, all the way through to the man. But I cut, you need to calm down. And I switch it, even though it's not one of my personal favorite songs, with Paper Rings. And here's why. I think that that song specifically is a shake it off kind of moment. And I think we need that very early on for like, you know, uh, to reinvigorate like the audience. Because we're about to go into a couple sad songs before we get to Fearless. Um, I would keep Lover. And then I would personally cut The Archer, but I would switch it with Death by a Thousand Cuts. Um, which I think is just thematically so different from Lover that it would feel really good. Um, You could also switch those if you want to just end on Lover. Um, I'm like open to that, Taylor. Uh, Just let me know. But (laughs) um, yeah, I think that's what I would mainly do. When she comes out in like London this summer and she just has our exact set list that she reworked, like it's okay, you can do it. I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to change like a good amount here. So I'm going to keep Miss Americana and Cruel Summer. I think that's fun. But then I'm going to go to I Think He Knows. Uh, I love I Think He Knows. 
it's so good. I'm really like with this set. I'm also very like, I think the energy needs to go up and down just because it's the start and you need this like uh, uh, fun, energetic song. I think paper rings also would work. That song also would be so fun to sing with a crowd. I'll just say, um, but then you go into lover still. This is going to be controversial. Y'all we need a pickup song after lover. I'm going to go with me. I think, look, it's not a great song, but it'd be very fun with a crowd. I think we can retroactively be like, it's fun. It's a shake it off moment which you like. So I just think me has a place here that, and I also just think like Taylor needs to own it. I think that's the one part where like, just own that you did me and we'll be fine. Um, imagine everyone saying um, like, imagine the hey chance. Kids, spelling it. fun. Yeah. That'd um, be amazing. Well, actually it's funny. My original one before um, paper rings, I was going to do me because I can see the transition from the man to me being very good. But I do feel like we go back into that thing where we're losing the parents. <laughs> and, like we're losing the 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 Gen Nex and up. And like only because this is coming up so early. If this was later on, um, I do understand it. I, I in my head, you know, one of the things we discussed was, oh, do we want to talk about if we would move them? And I was trying and there's only one and we'll get to it that I think is really terrible. I hate the, hate the transition. But um, the rest, I think they have to be where they are. See, I would I would I you could rework it. I think that's too much for a conversation here. You'd have to like two hours to explain the full concert experience. But like I personally would put Lover later on. But um, I just see like I see the transition like lights go down and then you hear I promise that you'll never find another like me. Like I just see the vision. <laughs> um, but we're not ending with me. We're going to end with Cornelia Street because I think that's a very fun song to end on. I think it's a good transition to Fearless. I see the vision. I see the moment. I see the sparks at the end. Um, I think that's a fun way to end Lover. Um, so moving on from Lover, we're going to way early on with Fearless. So Fearless was her second album um and it was kind of like her big moment she went from just like a little country music star to um making songs like you belong with me which ended up winning um the female pop music video which led to the kanye moment um when kanye freaked out about single ladies um that groundswell of support probably pushed her to getting album of the year and um, it started her kind of on the path to being like a major celebrity. Um, another interesting thing about this is uh, accusations that she wasn't writing her own stuff came during this album. So uh, Speak Now, which we'll talk about later, is all written by her. So there isn't a film to go along with Fearless per se, but there is a TV three night special called Journey to Fearless. Uh, no, actually, it is considered a movie. I don't know why you could buy the DVD and it yes. played like a movie, but <laughs> well, yes, with commercial break, like spots, it, it is still like, just a mashed up TV show. Um, but and yes, it credits is in the middle, in the yes. middle. You're So when you're watching this, you're like, she'll get to it. And she's like, I'm about to go sing my first song. And then it like cuts to black and then it plays through all the credits. And then, um, cuts to, uh, all the different like people who made it, including Mattel, um, <laughs> and then cuts right back. And it's one of the funniest things that I've seen because like the first time it happened, I was like, oh, this was short. And then it just kept going. <laughs> and this introduces uh, Taylor Swift. It has some live performances within it. Um, and it tells her story on how she got the journey to Fearless. You know, it's in the title. Um, I will say this is iconic. It is not good but this is like <laughs> if you want a perfect capturing of like and this is something i appreciate about this and we'll talk about this with speak now in a minute with like um if you want a perfect capturing of what tv was like at the time like the sensibilities of specials like this where it's just like this innocent and there's like these reenactments that are awful and like it's trying so hard to get you sold on the story of taylor swift where it's fucking hilarious this one's on youtube i would like really recommend you get some drinks you get some friends and watch this alongside yeah. there's another one in a little bit like make it a double feature um but i really like it's not good 
but it is very, very funny. Like at every stage, um, we were texting each other as we were watching it. And we would just be like, oh my God, we got to this moment. Um, it's very fun. Yeah, this is also where I found out that, and it continues on, that she just like walks into the crowd like she's Khaleesi. Like just walks in and is like, all right, all of you. And they're all like grabbing her. It's very yeah. creepy. And I was like, okay, well, she did that when she was a child. And it's like, no, it keeps going. <laughs> I think it stops at red or a reputation is the first one where she stops doing this. And I was like, girl, <laughs> <laughs> I kept imagining like Olivia Rodrigo trying to do that with her yeah. fans. And then you just see like an arm lifted out. Like, There's literally five covered. minutes a five minute segment of her hugging every single person on the floor, like literally every <laughs> single. And I thought like, I thought it was like, okay, cute. You do like a couple hugs. No, she like literally every single person on that floor got a hug. Um, it was wild. Yes. <laughs> and during the movie, there's one guy that you watch in the back corner and he's like the most, I want to hug guy. And I'm like, he's going to get his hug and you watch him while she's hugging other people. <laughs> and then he's like, um, it is so good. No, there are so many things about this that felt like very um, young, but also like in a very fun way. Um, I didn't feel uh, like on Letterboxd, I didn't rate these with numbers because they're like ephemera. Like, <laughs> I feel like you can't be like, oh, yeah, this is a, a thing that I'm, you know, judging the quality of, especially when I started watching like YouTube videos that are for some reason listed on um, her Letterboxd. So like. Um, overall though, no, I had a really good time with this one. It also, uh, introduces you to a lot of things that like are the old Swifty lore. And that's a, that's going to be a recurring thing for this is that like, I'll hear jokes, um, and you don't realize what they're from. And then it's these movies, um, is where they first came from. You know, uh, the main thing with you was we were talking and I was explaining Abigail to you, um, who, if you don't know, is uh, Taylor Swift's best friend, who is just some girl that is best friends with Taylor Swift, and that's her whole life. Uh, <laughs> and like, um, I was like explaining this whole thing, and I was like, "No, no, no!" This like random girl just goes to all these big parties and hangs out with all these celebrities, and then all of a sudden, we're watching the next one, and there's Abigail acting, <laughs> trying to replay like her talking about her boyfriend and everything. Um, so all of that was like really fun. Um, and then the quality of the show was crazy. Um, it also, oh, the other thing that I think is really interesting is when she does teardrops on my guitar here, it is the same stage design that she uses later for uh, Tolerate It. Hilariously. I was like watching it. I'm like, this is the same thing. And overall, <laughs> you'll see that a lot is that like, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize, like, when I watched all this stuff in eras, I'm like, oh, this is unique. And da, da, da. it's like, no, 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 no. Girly does this at every time. <laughs> like, which is fun. I don't mind it. It was just like, I thought it was like all built for this show. And it's like, no more. It's a lot more like tried and true aspects. But I kind of like that more. I mean, like, yes, yeah, it's like no, a I funny high school version of Tolerate It. I wish I did this episode before I saw the Eras tour because, like, all of a sudden you start to notice little things and you're like, oh, that's from Speak Now World Tour. That's from J Fearless. That's from, Re or, you know, so on and so yeah. forth. It makes Eras, which is already such a celebration of Swift's career. And that's one of the reasons I really, like, I get quite moved by the experience. But um, it makes it just so much richer. Um, I was a big fan. Now, speaking of stage design, I also must say, I love the Fearless stage. Talk about versatility. It goes from lockers to a castle to oh, yeah. like a library. Um, versatility. I've never seen a stage with that much versatility and just a few curves. Um, it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the tour was cute. I like, I, I kind of like went through and I was like, oh, which tours would I really have liked to attended? I, Fearless is definitely a basic tour, but like, I thought it was cute. I would have been satisfied if I was like in 2009 you going also to watch it. To hug her for 30 minutes that's true that's true <laughs> um yeah no i think this one's really fun um was this the one with the um tea party or was that speak now i think that was speak it was this one no it was the it was definitely this one okay the moroccan themed tea party oh which 
<laughs> That's what you were talking about. Because I also would have been able to hug her at the Moroccan theme tea party backstage, <laughs> which outside of any of the theming for the album, the oh tour, anything, is just this like desert oasis. <laughs> well, and we didn't even talk about the craziest part is that during should have said no, she gets soaked. They like start pouring water on her. And I was like, oh, like she is drenched. And then she has to go get like cleaned up to go to her Moroccan theme. You're right. Cause it was this one. Um, yeah, no, that's this one had so many like of those quirky, definitely like both early two thousands and also, um, very, uh, early career stuff like the crimes of passion, uh, <laughs> which was, uh, <laughs> and i tried to yeah. find them i cannot find them online that's like a good enough quality but apparently was interviewing all of her ex-boyfriends and like people and like what she did to them <laughs> and uh it was either sometimes would be the original guy and then sometimes was an actor portraying which is just so funny i was like oh yeah he hates you so much he won't even do this <laughs> why is that not the heiress tour all I'm saying. Crimes of I, passion. Bring it back. <laughs> a different boyfriend for each year. <laughs> it is also Literally. funny, though, how much she's moved away from that. Where, like, you listen through, especially this one, and I think Speak Now as well, where she's, like, constantly talking about how she writes songs of, to destroy her boyfriend's lives. And you're like, huh, that's where that came from. It, w- it was, you like, whether or not she, like, actually meant it i always thought that that was something that people extrapolated i was like no she she says it multiple times on camera (laughs) yeah she just kind of said it um (laughs) moving from the fearless tour to the eras tour version of this a smaller set list we only have fearless you belong with me and love story i'm gonna be honest live in person this one was like good it was fun watching it multiple times at home or in the theater also i think this is like my favorite era this is like i think it hits so fucking hard and genuinely like i'll start crying when she goes over to paul's face and squeezes paul's face and it only gets worse now that we've watched all these because now i'm like i've seen baby paul um not you paul yeah i know the movie um it makes me like that's so fun and that's so like i don't know i I just i literally could cry like that they came all this way and the heiress tour is such like looking back and like going from fearless and being like this is where we started to now like look at us look at where we've been like i don't know i really like for some reason the fearless tour there's like two modes of watching the heiress tour and i hate that i've watched it enough at home to know this either like i'm gonna cry at fearless and it's gonna be like horribly emotional or i'm gonna like lose my mind during reputation those are like the two like <laughs> it's one path or the other um but like and i think that the fearless at home really maybe like reanalyze the entire tour and the entire movie and the entire concert film and be like this is so like i don't know there's like a poignancy there's like a weight here right we're like we're celebrating like this history i don't know i like i really love the fearless tour um part or the fearless setless part of eras um do you <laughs> like it yeah, no, I definitely do. And I actually um, don't have anything I would change. The I might add um, a uh, a song like Mr. Perfectly Fine or That's the Way I Loved You. Um, just for something that's a little more of a deep cut. I do feel like, and overall this is one of my uh, things that I don't really understand about some of these upcoming eras is this is kind of like the era rehabilitation tour as well. Like she brought back lover from being like one of her least successful to with cruel summer. And I don't think she does that. Well, with some of these, like these are the songs, you know, from fearless. Maybe you didn't know fearless, but the rest are the songs, you know, from fearless. And I think that like pushing outside of that would have been interesting to get like, you know, more fans on different songs. I also kind of would love a vault song to pop up somewhere in here. Um, I just think it'd be fun. Uh, also, Mr. Perfectly Fine is just one of those like great songs, but I can't, I don't have too much faults with this one. Like overall, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't remove it. Yeah. And not just For- because it's short. 
sure i think it's like really clean originally had mr perfectly fine as i something i added but then i was like oh i have too many tracks so i had to cut some down so i just i'm keeping it the same i think it's just like perfect short and sweet i think she could have really learned with some of the other segments to cut it down like this i i feel like there is um this is a good example of what to do with some of them we're like the re-release already came out we've done the fearless moment if you like fearless you like fearless if you don't you don't get the hits in and let's move on um and let's move on um, as we move into Evermore. Evermore, Taylor Swift's ninth studio album, the second of the pandemic albums, a surprise drop, which like, I wish I was more of a Swifty. Like, imagine now if you just woke up one morning and Swift was like, hey, by the way, today I'm releasing an entire album. That would have been like, it would be unthinkable now. But people like lived through that twice. Uh, yes. And also, um, so there's a lot of, conversation about like why evermore flopped it's her worst album outside of um uh debut actually and i think there's two parts to it um i do think that people are right that um there was something about um they changed the law to where you can't do surprise drops anymore because selling an album a vinyl uh is not the same as um delivering the vinyl so now it only counted for delivering and that did not happen with folklore so she was able to like sell a vinyl and that was enough but if she um tried to release a vinyl of evermore it didn't count until it was actually like shipped out so she was off by months the vinyl for this didn't come out until i want to say may and the album dropped in uh november december so that was like a big mistake. But the other thing I'll say is that I, not being a huge fan, thought that this was just an extended folklore because of the title. And I think that that is something that um, did hurt it. Now I understand how different they are. But at the time I was like, oh, it's just like, you know, probably remixes and something, you know, there's an extra song or two. Did not realize it was a whole different album. Um, that being said, this is one of my personal favorite albums and much like lover don't understand what song choices are going on here, but <laughs> yeah. Um, it, so I'll just say like, I also like the album. I went through a depressive state during, um, COVID-19 lockdown where I'd listen to this in folklore every single night, just like, um, all the way through. Um, so I have a lot, of <laughs> a lot of memories with this, but I do think they're both really good albums, but I do appreciate Evermore um, going into the actual, well, sadly, there's no like movie for this. There's no long pond sessions, which I'm sad about. I do think that would have slapped. Um, but going into the Eras tour, Act 3, um, we have four songs or five, if I can actually count very basic numbers. Um, Tis the Damn Season, Willow, Marjorie, Champagne Problems, and Tolerate It. However, I think it's worth mentioning that we did not hear Tis the Damn Season. Instead, we got it replaced with Nobody, No Crime with the Haim sisters. Haim. Uh, Haim. And uh, for you to go, oh, he loves that song. So um, he must have enjoyed that. No, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it at all. Because Taylor, in all her infinite wisdom, did not sing the song. She had the Haim sisters sing all of it. And they, you know... I don't want to say specifically. So I saw, I will get into this more. I was there for the final night of the American. And I feel like they had been drinking before they got on stage because it was like karaoke. Um, it was so embarrassing to watch them do um, the uh, no body, no crime. Cause they were just like barely singing the lyrics and like, not really like on key or anything like that. It was like rough. Um, so that was the low point of the entire, because I was so pumped to hear it. Um, I was actually, so I, I was in a VIP area and I had, we had a private bathroom. This is important. We had a private bathroom and I like heard it and I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. And I'm like watching my hands to get out, to go here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's overall. I think this one's, uh, pretty rough. For anyone who wants to know what it's like to be friends with Paul, this is how it goes. He's like, oh, I have the Lover vinyl. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was in the VIP section on the last night of the Eras tour. Like, this is how he is. So just be aware <laughs> of that. Um, I will say, I think the 
song choices are interesting. I think the production design is quite good. Other than the fact Amazing. that she is copying from a little theme park, I believe in Utah, which is sad. Um, I do think that the actual like vibes here, the witchy vibes, a uh, friend of the podcast, King of Burbank, or I don't know if he still is that Michael Fairbanks. Um, he went as one of the people for Halloween with like a little ball. Like I think that all. Oh yeah, that's true. And she did it better. Not no offense, Michael. <laughs> um, I, that's true. Um, I just know Michael because I took a picture of him. But um, yeah, I, I think that overall, like the actual visual design probably never gets better in the concert than it does in Evermore. Um, but I, so I, I don't know. I appreciate it, even if it's not necessarily probably the best selection from the album. Um, what would you pick for your set list then? So um, I was pretty uh, i was less harsh on this one than i wanted to be um i would cut tis, tis the same season and i would do gold rush instead i think the opening to gold rush is really nice um i would and i would keep it in the movie i don't understand that the logic there um willow i think is still great i don't like marjorie but i understand why it is in like I don't like it for the concert, but I understand emotionally why she has Marjorie in the concert. So I'm going to leave it, even though I personally would cut it. I understand having your grandma's voice, like going through the whole every auditorium and, you know, stadium in the world. Very emotional. I get that. Totally understand. Would not put it in there, but I'll allow it. Um, with that, though, I'm giving myself an extra song. Um, and I'm going to put long story short. Um, I think long story short is one of those songs that just has the opportunity to both be a, like a little bit of a dance movement, you know, a little bit of energy, but also could be revitalized in a really nice way. Um, also it's in my, uh, understanding kind of the, um, sequel to one of my favorite songs, Wonderland. Um, I just think they go together if you listen to them back to back. Um, and then I'm going to cut tolerate it, which I think is. And um, I'm going to put right where you left me while still doing a kind of like structured scene that she does and tolerate it. But I think I can just visualize doing some situation where like you have like dust textures falling and all these people like moving and stopping as the song goes. Um, you know, people keep saying, um, oh, she can't do right where you left me. Uh, she just doesn't know it. I'm like, OK, she said that for a surprise song. That's completely different than putting it on the set list. Um, but if you need to do a cut or shortened version of it, that's fine. But I do think right where you left me, um, right where you left me. And long story short, I think if those were in there, the average person would like the Evermore section more. I think fans love it. But I do hear that most people are like, you know, it's the bathroom break. And I was like, OK, well, that sucks um, because also this album does need a boost. You know, it's like it's slowly making traction. But when you go and look, it's still not even making sales because I think her her choices are um, you just think it's the lesser folklore, which it's not. It's its own thing. Absolutely. Um, I, I did cut Marjorie, you know, peace and love. I love that that is all. I appreciate that. Um, I did go ahead and cut it. Uh, I'm going to go Willow, <laughs> Champagne Problems, Coney Island, which I think is really fun, right where you left me. And then I kept Tolerate It, even though I don't love the live performance. Like, a lot of people love it. It's an iconic visual. That was my Marjorie. Um, like, I was like, sure. you know, I, I understand it. I can't. And I like Marjorie. Time, I'm annoyed when Tolerate It is on. And sure. I think I think it's just like it's a little too stagey. It also has the worst shot in the entire movie. Um, even after Fearless, though, even after you saw the little high school kid version of it, yes, you've sad. <laughs> <laughs> you what? You don't like the shot where it just follows the random guy, and you're like, "Who is this? Uh, oh my god!" So yeah, uh, I think it's the worst shot in the entire movie, and I don't think they thought about it. But it's a long, uh, you know, tracking shot of this uh, performer, and then they reveal it, and it's no one. And every single person I have talked to goes, oh, I thought it was going to be a huge celebrity. That's like, nope. <laughs> it's just a man. I just think it's a really bad shot. I think that whole sequence, even within the movie, is not particularly shot well. It's one of the worst for um, not being directly in front of the stage. 
because she's off doing stuff and you're just kind of like watching a screen. Um, yeah, I think overall it's a really rough one. Um, side note, I want to say also that I love the champagne problems clap. I think it's one of the best parts of the show. I know some people think it's too long or too what it's fantastic. Um, I have fun every single time that I see it in this and then, you know, seeing how long people did it in other countries. Yeah. And I will like just the humble brag, like we did go to the concerts that started going really long. Like it was like four or five minutes before us. And then it went like eight to 10 starting with us. So, like just saying like, mm-hmm. yeah, it will. And then um, apparently now she has to like stop them because of us. Yeah. Like, it, I do think if she had made it like South America and she'd allowed it to keep going, it would have been like 45 minute clap session. <laughs> Each night sure. is like, we're one upping you. Um, so, Paul, I think we're going to ask him to do it forevermore. I have only one question. Are you ready for it? Bong, bong, bong. So, uh, Reputation is one of her most interesting albums. It's her sixth album. Um, It was right after 1989. Um, And this is like the uh, complete destruction of Taylor Swift uh, (laughs) in a very interesting way. So uh, Kanye released a song called Famous, where he says that um, I think Taylor and I still might have sex. Um, Why I made that bitch famous. And then... um, I think uh, at that point, people were like, wow, that's a really obnoxious song, especially when he did a music video with her completely naked. Um, But then uh, she said that she was not happy about it. And then and one of the few PR moments I think that Tree screws up ever, probably the only one, is this next statement. So they release um, Kanye leaks. Um, her agreeing to the, um, I think Taylor and I might still have sex line. Um, and she's like, yeah, I think it's provocative. Thank you for checking in with me. And her response is, where does he say that bitch? And it's like, no, it's not even that bitch that you're specifically upset about you personally. It's that he said, I made you famous. So that's why you'd want to fuck me. It's like that kind of like misogyny. It's like a different thing than their little like, I, you know, we might still have sex. Um, and I think that when she says just, oh, it's that bitch. And then she said, you know, the iconic uh, line about um, being part of a narrative, one that I never asked to be a part of. And then um, it kind of blew up from there. Meanwhile, on the other side, um, she's just broken up with Calvin Harris and um, there's a huge controversy about um, whether or not she wrote or is vocals in um, this is what you came for. At the same time, she starts dating this little British man um, who we'll get into later. And then um, it all ends with, um, Oh, her label and her start fighting. Um, And she ends up leaving them right after this album uh big machine records who she'd been with since she was discovered um so all of that is going on and then she releases this record and uh look what you made me do happens and it's the song doesn't do well but the um music video does like it was like one of the like iconic music videos and you know everyone knows it the gold taylor is uh can't come to the phone right now why she's dead um you know all of this people hated this record or loved this record it was the like most polarizing thing and i think now most people have come around to they love it but it was it was rough out there for a while um because you would be like no this is fantastic um but uh yeah i think this whole segment moving into the actual movie um oh I guess we should talk about the tour first. Um, the Reputation Stadium tour is really, really good. Um, but I do feel like it started getting a little homogenized in a way that I like. I really enjoy a lot of it. 
but I miss some of the quirkiness about some of the previous ones. Uh, curious what you think. It's interesting watching the movie because I mean, I think the intro is like iconic, but then watching it, even though I like the songs, even though this is probably the most grand and epic Taylor's been when it comes to like production design, except for that like um, skeleton snake that she was flying on that was like shaking. It was like, I would not trust that with my life. I was worried for Taylor. Um, I I do agree. And it made me kind of appreciate eras more. And I think like we will come back to the eras tour in like, you know, 20 years and see what it did for concerts where it's like, I kind of missed having a narrative or having a direction or just having something like, yes, it's all really presented well, but ultimately like just going song to song with nothing else. I don't know. It felt a little bit, um, it lost my interest here and there until like a song came on that I loved. But even then, like I've seen the songs performed. I don't know. Like, and I agree even like, we'll get there speak now world tour like there's a quirkiness that adds a little bit more to it when it's all just presented on this base level of being really good i just wish there was something a little bit more for identity or a little bit more for engagement um with that said i think going to the heiress tour this is like one of the best i know i said fearless is my favorite like this is a really i think strong section of the heiress tour you go from ready for it to delicate to don't blame me to look what you made me do four songs in and out um, I think they're all bangers. I think the transitions are obviously iconic, especially the don't blame me to look what you made me do. Um, I really appreciate this. I love the album um, growing with the album other than like Endgame, when I can delete like the one or two songs I don't like. This is one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums, if not my favorite. Um, I'm a big fan. Honestly, I, I like all of this. I like the tour. I like the eras part. Um, I like it all. Yeah, um, I think this one I didn't have any changes for this one. Um, because the only thing I would do is personally, I like, this is why we can't have nice things, but it does not fit in this version of reputation. Um, I also don't think it fits in the concert movie. Um, it was very weird to see that list like pop up at the end. Um, but yeah, I think this is all really great. I think the, um, the stage work she does in this one is particularly impressive with the boxes, with the different tailors in there, including older or uh, future tailors that weren't part of the uh, original, you know, uh, the boxes. There's Lover, there's, you know, Folklore and all those in there. Um, I love how attention to detail it is in all the different eras within those boxes. Like, I was watching, I'm like, oh, that's the, uh, you know, Speak Now World Tour dress. And that's the, you know, um, it, it, that was really fun. Um uh, yeah, I have no real changes with this one. Um, I just, I, I, I would be adding things, and I don't know if I even want to. Um, in a similar way to uh, Fearless. Valid. Um, I am gonna add one at the very end. I'm gonna add. I did something bad. I think that's just a really fun note to end it on. But like, I'm not overly sold to that. Um, I do know before the actual Eras tour when I went live, I took an edible at the beginning, and like reputations when it really started to hit, which is a great time for it to hit. And during like what she made me do, I just like involuntarily yelled, "She's fucking dead!" During it. Um, and it was very fun. So I and I we had two Amish girls in front of us, and they did look at me. So. <laughs> shout out um to those podcasts listening out. Oh. <laughs> yeah and they're here with us today i'm sorry <laughs> but you know that was i was feeling it um i also wanted to say one quick thing about the tour movie um it is also the first time i saw them add in a little bit of like uh what you see a lot throughout eras um and we we didn't talk about it in evermore but there's a moment when she like puts her hand and then they leave in the fact that she's like what am i doing like just those little jokes, those little like uh, humanistic moments that aren't Taylor. They're like Taylor um, in reputation. There's a whole sequence that they could have cut where she blows her nose. And it is so funny that they were like, we're leaving this in because like, it feels like such a personal moment. This guy, like one of her dancers comes out and like brings her a tissue. Like he's proposing and she's like, thank you. And then like blows her nose on stage. <laughs> It's like, oh, okay. And I loved it. It was so great. And then you go and look at the letterbox and that's like 15, 20% of the comments are like the blowing the nose moment. Um, But yeah, no, I think uh, reputation's great. 
Well, let's move on to the shortest era on the Eras Tour. Let's move on to Speak Now. So Speak Now, Taylor Swift's third studio album, released in 2010, re-released. Um, she re-recorded it, what, last year? For this one, we have two movies we're talking about, technically. We do have the Speak Now World Tour, but she also released a special called Speak Now. Um, it aired, I believe, on TV. It's really giving 2011. Um, and I will say, I don't have a ton of history with Speak Now. I do think it's a really good album. I remember, especially on the re-release, like kind of falling in love with it. But I wasn't necessarily expecting much from either of these films. And I think these are two of the best things we watched as far as being entertaining. Oh, yeah. Um, wild. So, like, uh, taking one at a time. The world tour is genuinely camp. Uh, this concert is insane at times um, in this really fun, over-the-top way um, that just, like, literally had me laughing out loud. And then the Speak Now special. As I mentioned with Journey to Fearless, Journey to Fearless was a perfect cap, like, capturing of what that special would look like in 2009 or 2010. This is very much so giving 2011, 2012. Um, you have these little moments, like, they meet Ellen, uh, they go to the haunted house, but then, like, it goes a step further to where not only do you have them, like, going through a haunted house, like, it is literally a segment from Ellen, but then they perform, like, haunted inside a haunted house. <laughs> and it's, like, the haunted house, the house <laughs> from Psycho. <laughs> literally. <laughs> And, like, there's little moments like that where, like, this is campy and it's fun and it is nostalgic. But then it takes that extra step forward to where I'm like, this should be essential viewing. Like, truly both of these, I wouldn't say either are, like, really great. But I would say if you are a Taylor Swift fan, you do need to watch these because they are iconic. Well, I was thinking about my favorite part is when she's like, an hour ago I posted on Twitter to come out to Hollywood Boulevard. And I'm like... I'm sorry, you did what? (laughs) Like, imagining today, like, if Taylor was like, hey, concert, playing a new song you haven't heard on Hollywood Boulevard, people are dead. (laughs) Like, I don't think I could go for fear of, like, my life. (laughs) Um, So to think that she just did that. And they used to do that a lot. Like, all, you know, celebrities used to do that just in general um, in this era because... I don't want to say people were more civilized, um, but it sure seems like it, especially, you know, once again, she goes out into the crowd. It's all grubby fingers with them. Um, But yeah, this has like so many like uh, insane moments. I enjoyed all of the the tour. I thought that was really fun. Uh, Basically, it's she does a different song in random locations. um, And that's the whole thing. And it's it's cool. You get to listen to the songs in their original you know, her younger voice, but live. um, And just, it's a really fun little time. Um, Yeah. Do you want to maybe talk about in the world tour, some of the uh, mashups that there were with maybe some non um, fan songs? Well, I mean, I really wanted to talk about the fact that it starts out and there's a sparkler angel. (laughs) Three sparkler angels. (laughs) Don't count the other two out. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Like, Every few seconds in this, you would be like, what is happening right now? Um, so it was like, there'd be sparkler angels. Um, oh, it also has the moment that I now understand why people make fun of Taylor Swift for doing her little like intro things. Because she's like, y'all are so nice. But sometimes people aren't nice. In fact, you could call them mean. <laughs> It's so good. Um, and she does it like three or four times in this. Um, but uh, so the other thing was like, um, it would have moments that you're like, you cut this actually. And the, so there's a guy who does like this, like Charlie Chaplin ish thing while she's getting changed. And it just keeps going. <laughs> An extended chimney sweeper <laughs> segment. Yes. Yes. I was Um, shocked I didn't get a text from you during it because I'm just watching and I was like, oh, this must be short because Paul didn't tell me about this. (laughs) And it goes on for like 10 minutes of him doing this little chaplain dance. Sure. Like he's one of the ones from Mary Poppins and it leads into the song and then it keeps going. It's like crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, And then uh, you wanted to talk about the mashups. Um, So she's doing Back to December and then all of a sudden... She pulls out Apologize by Timbaland and um, then goes into You're Not Sorry, which also thematically makes no sense. 
<laughs> I understand the concept of uh, back to December and apologize, but you're not sorry is a different song. <laughs> like it's a different uh, storyline that they're talking about. Uh, this also has uh, better than revenge uh, with the mattress, which was very exciting for me. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah. Uh, the other one being fearless, I'm yours and Hey Soul Sister, um, is another one of the mashups. Crazy. Um, and then I don't understand how you were in your third studio album and you just decide to do a cover of, um, uh, teardrops for jupiter yeah, yeah. Tear, uh it's like drops of jupiter yeah oh, w- why i understand doing it for your concert but your concert movie insane i loved it it was it's was yeah so dumb <laughs> i believe that was a surprise song no yeah like so like that's iconic i mean i like maybe the she should have brought that back where the surprise songs for theirs tour was like one random song like that's wild and then one of her own because i thought that was an iconic imagine oh. like because i go to like their tour, i'm like oh my god like i got i know places and king of my heart like imagine if you're like oh i went to taylor swift i got teardrops from jupiter like yeah iconic well uh no she did lose control by eminem as one of her surprise songs. Can you imagine? And yes, I have watched it. And yes, it's fantastic. Um, it is so funny. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I do. I do kind of miss that stuff. I was also like, I'll listen to a lot of like older songs and I'll be like, I wonder if she ever covered. And like most of the time, no, but sometimes actually, yeah. And it's usually during this era or fearless where it's just like, Oh yeah, she did that. Um, but, uh, Oh, yeah. Um, The fireworks during Dear John or the entire like full skit for Speak Now, the song, um, which is a whole wedding sequence is insane. And then um, she kind of ended on this like uh, really crazy red like strap dress uh, (laughs) that uh, I I told you, I think that looked just like... um, Jean Grey from the third X-Men movie. I was like, I wonder if that was, because it was around the same time. Um, So yeah, all of that was really fun. Uh, This one's crazy, which is so funny that it goes into her most boring uh, era's set. Yeah, well, only one. I mean, like, they added Long Live, but it was originally just Enchanted, which, like, I like, but is kind of an insane choice considering how many hits there are on this album. And then you just do Enchanted and Long Live, which are good, but, like, also Long Live was just on Reputation. Like, I don't know. I feel like it was a strange choice here. Um, I really wanted to flesh out Speak Now, so I have it go Speak Now, Better Than Revenge, The Story of Us, and Enchanted. Four songs, in and out, doesn't hit everything on the album, um, but I needed to throw something in. I feel like the story of us, probably a lot of people would replace with something, but I just think it's a fun song, and I think it works well. Um, What did you do with this segment? Um, So I kept Enchanted, I cut Long Live, I did Sparks Fly, and then I ended on Haunted. Um, Because I think that those three feel very like encapsulation of all the different types of those songs. Um, without going into one of the piano ballads, like Back to December or Dear John. Um, it, if I could, um, I think it would be fun to have one of the surprise, like it's a surprise, and she either do Enchanted or Haunted, because they're like opposites, and I think that would have been very fun, and you don't know which one you're going to get. Um and in general, I wish that like that happened. There was like one song that could be switched out. And we'll talk about that. I also have uh, something with that in the surprise songs. But um, yeah, no, overall, I think this one's fine. I think the outfits are the best part of this one. Um, especially for um, my night, the last night, she was in this blue outfit. And every time I see it, I think it's her, like probably the best outfit in the show. Uh, it's so good. Sure. Um, so now speaking while well, you said blue, let's go to the opposite. Let's go to red. 
I mean, the opposite of blue is orange, but. (laughs) Do your album now. Okay, this is also my least favorite transition in the entire show, because what do you mean it goes in order all of a sudden? (laughs) If I was going to do it, I would just even flop them. Sure. Um, But it's just it's such a weird feeling. You're like. Oh, and then, yeah, this is the next one in that in that order. It almost feels like she was like, I guess I have to do speak now. We'll just put it right there and it'll lead into. So Red was her fourth studio album. It was released in 2012. And um, it's the album where she moves from country more into like a um, almost rock sound. But it's also her evolution to pop. Um That's one of the reasons that later she fully moves to pop is that she's experimenting a lot in this and the Grammys did not like that. And she did not win album of the year. And she talks about that a bunch that she made 1989 literally because she was so upset. Uh, Specifically, it's kind of an iconic moment where um, they said random access memories and you watch her like jump and it's very embarrassing. Um, (laughs) And uh, this one is her, like, biggest breakup album in general uh, so far. And um, I think that um, it has some really great songs. It's the one that was hardest to grow on me, but now really has. Um, I uh, really like a lot of the songs also. I think the vault is too long, but having listened through, there's only like two songs from the vault that I would remove. Um, so really like I get it. It's like, unfortunately I'm like, uh, after a while, but I do think, um, a lot of these songs that she added aren't really from the album. Um, their songs she did around this era. So I think we're also going to get that a lot more in, um, debut as well. And then also reputation, where we'll be getting songs like the 50 shades of gray song and things like that. Um, so this one, I just think is bulky because of that. And it'll be the same both times. Um, but overall, I think this one's pretty good. Uh, this one weirdly does not have a tour movie. Um, there's different rumors on why that is, but like the only thing we have is, uh, Taylor Swift live at the sin. Um, and this is like, I believe a private concert for like a bunch of rich people, um, which like they don't really explain when you're watching it. But like um, later on, I see that it's like a private concert um, listed in multiple different spots. So I think that um, that one's really cool because it's very much. I would say almost the uh, sister performance to City of Lover in that it's very intimate. It's like a smaller, it's the smallest group of all of them, but um, it's really nice. It's a lot of, you know, more acoustics. Um, Yeah. I thought that one was just really pleasant and it's short. That's nice. Um, I loved it. I mean, it was like disappointing. If you're going to be in such an iconic location, I think just being on the inside of a boat is like pretty boring. Honestly, this could have been in Cleveland, Ohio, and it would have looked exactly the same, which I think is sad. But I did like, I mean, maybe it's because there's no tour of it, but like, I thought the performances were really fun. I like the um, implication that Taylor Swift just knows perfect French and then still replies in English to all the questions. <laughs> I love that. I thought this was fun. Um, the album, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a huge fan of, but I will say I think the actual Eras tour itself, um, four songs again, 22, we're never getting back together i knew you were trouble and then all too well 10 minute version i think it works well and if you want a bathroom break and you're really okay with all too well i like the little break it gives you like i like this overall even though i don't like the um album i think the concept of this and also the live at the sign or whatever it was um scene sin 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 was good yeah sin we did not spend 10 minutes looking it up to be clear um yeah so um, I think this one's good. It's very upsetting for me because I do think that uh, this is a good cry album and we can't get a cry song in there because of, uh, I think just all too well, 10 minute version. 
just kind of saps the air for that kind of song. Uh, I was going to add personal, one of my personal favorites, Forever Winter, because I thought that would be a good moment. But you can't really add, or like a Ronin or something like deep cut, very sad. Um, but uh, you can't really because of All Too Well. It's just like all the energy. You have to do the three short songs, short fast songs, and then do the 10 minute version. So that's unfortunate. Um, I don't think you can change this without removing 10 minute version. Um, and you have to have that in this. So it's fine. I'm cool with it. I'm going to be honest. I did switch it around. Only one. I did take out 22, which I know is iconic with the hat. I know it's a good song. I know it's fun. But I think it would be better to lead into All Too Well with I Bet You Think About Me. And then we sacrifice 22 is my truth. You know, that, sorry, cute. Stan. Um, I... I, my personal belief is that this is the last time she will ever do 22 on tour. So um, it's just like she is 34. And I think like you can get away with it now. But like her next tour, she's not doing 22 ever again. So like let her have it. But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's one of those. It's like the last time. So a lot of this yeah. feels like very much it's perfect for eras to her, even though it's not songs I would choose. I feel like that's probably like the truth for a lot of these songs on the eras tour though. It's like, I don't think, you know, for the next concert, whatever it is, unless it's a version of eras, I don't think we're going to be pulling out a lot of these songs. So like, I agree. Yeah. And I'd rather like, and I got to see them live. You know, I would never get to see 22 live probably other than that. So, I mean, I'll take it. I'm not complaining, but um, yeah, well, let's move on to folklore. So next up, we have Folklore, the first of her pandemic albums released in 2020. Um, another surprise drop, which is like, again, when we talked about it Evermore, pretty fun. Um, this movie for this is Folklore, The Long Pond Sessions on Disney+, Plus, released as a Disney Plus special. Um, I will say, for expecting this just to be another acoustic little set that we did, I mean, we talked about the red one, we talked about um, Speak Now, I guess, was different. But like, I expected this just to be a little acoustic thing. Um, I really like this. I have really liked the little moments with her and Jack and like at the cabin or whatever it is technically called, like chatting around the fire, chatting about why they created this album. Like I really thought that added something here. And I see you have the album there, the vinyl, because of course you do. Um, the music here is wonderful. I mean, like um, I think if you are going to listen to folklore, I really don't see why you wouldn't listen to the long pond version over the normal version. Like, I just think it's really like beautifully done. Um, probably like elevates the album for me um I what think, are your thoughts i think betty is the only one that you have to listen to the um because betty you lose the harmonica which is one of the best parts but yeah i think a lot of songs that i particularly don't like um are really great in this um uh, my uh realization watching this again um and i don't know i i haven't seen people talk about this this was recorded after the album was made like and i don't think people really like recognize that um as far as i've seen people are like oh it was recorded well but they are talking about reactions to the album that wouldn't have been out yet <laughs> so like um and when you realize that it makes this a very weird like piece of ephemera because you're watching them discuss it like is it a, you know, is it going to be a hit? Who knows? And it's like, you do. You know, Taylor. Like, she's talking a lot about, like, you know, are people going to connect with this? And then the next line, Jack's like, so everyone connected with this. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, but uh, I also think that's why we never got a, ever more Long Pond Sessions. Because um, they just, it doesn't exist. Because that was the ever more Long Pond Sessions. And they just recorded Folklore instead. Um you know, I'm sure they were recording uh, at Forevermore during that time, too. But, um, yeah, I think, like, overall, this is um, this is one of those albums that's very weird to me because I fall in and out of love with it constantly. I understand a lot of people like this is their favorite. I do understand that it's really great. But I do find a, a lot of these songs um, move off the kind of Taylor Swift uh, music that I like personally. Um, but yeah, no, I think overall, uh, especially the long pond sessions is just a really fun 
piece um, and very interesting look into the pandemic world that I think we'll have forgotten eventually. Yeah, I mean, I think this is definitely her like playing around with the sound, playing around with like what it means to write these types of songs. And then you get Evermore, which is like a far more refined version of it, where Evermore I'll listen like top to bottom. There's definitely songs on folklore I would skip. Um, And to be honest, it's probably what is one of the biggest, I think it's the second biggest, just looking at it, set list on the actual Eras tour itself. Um, You have Invisible String, Betty, The Last Great American Dynasty, August, Illicit Affairs, My Tears, Ricochet, and Cardigan, which is so many songs. <laughs> um, I think it is good choices, mostly. I mean, I appreciate, like, there's little songs like The Last Great American Dynasty probably would have been skipped any other time. It was one of my favorites, so I'm happy to, like, see her dance around to it. But um, definitely a little bit long and definitely, like, weirdly placed. I don't know. Do you like this section? Like, um, where? Do, what are your thoughts on this as far as the Eras tour? So, um... I think that the section, I will say that uh, when I've tried to stay up for the surprise songs in like when it was in uh, South America, um, I forget that this section is coming up after Red. I always think 1989 is next and I'm always gutted because I'm like, oh God, I'm, we're not, we're not doing it. So I always go to bed <laughs> every single time. I would be like, oh, fuck. Um, I think this, this section is a little too long. I think it's a little too slow. I think that it is the only section where there is no high for the lows. Like they're also that kind of sound um, that I think there's two problems. I think ending with all too well, 10 minute version, which is a slow kind of similar to these songs. And then moving into this just makes this feel interminable at some points. Um, but I do love the songs. Um, I would cut to, if we're getting to that point, um, not replace them with anything. Um, I would just cut um, Illicit Affairs and My Tears Ricochet. Um, just, just get me out. Do the Betty Cardigan and then, you know, Betty Cardigan in August. And you can keep the one. I don't, I love the one, but I don't need it. Um, and then Last Great American Dynasty I would keep because I think it's really fun stage-wise. But I don't think this needs to be um, as big a segment, segment it is, as it is. Especially because out of all of her albums, this is one that where like, if she's doing a residency in Vegas, she'll just like do this album. Um, it's like, I don't think we needed all of this right now. I think it's, yeah. a, it's, like it's a long-term album for her, so... I get why, because this is basically the tour of the album. I think, like, I really hope if they rework it, they cut it down. I basically bulldoze this in my version. I'm just doing Great American Dynasty, Betty, Cardigans, and then I'm adding the lakes at the end just because I think it flows nicely. Um, I don't think a lot of this needs to be there. It's cute. It's fun. But um, definitely, and also, like, this late into the show, I just... I, this is one where like I noticed a lot of people who stood throughout the entire show were sat down taking a break, which I guess is going to have a breather, but um, it does not be this long. So okay. for me, thank you next um, with that. Let's go to an album. I think that is very important <laughs> in our developments as Swifties. Um, 1989. Um, so 1989 is her fifth album. It was released in 2014. And, um, it's kind of her like big pop stardom moment. Uh, previously she's been huge, but this was like where she was like undeniable at that point. Um, you know, every single song that got released during this was a huge success. Um, everyone loved her. Uh, the style that she created for the um, original album, that New York look, um, was like instantly iconic, constantly copied. The music was great. You know, this 80s synth inspired. Um, and it's also the one where she um, has a lot of the dance hits that still last to this day. Um, the tour was very interesting for me because um, having watched some of the, the live streams, especially in Sydney, uh, <laughs> during... Um, blank space 
she the, everyone started going sydney and i was like what the fuck are they doing you know it'd be like boys only want love if it's torture sydney and i was like what what is this and then i'm watching the movie and she starts it herself with this like uh you know rep uh repetitious sound that like people start going sydney back at her and it becomes like this moment and it's like oh that's so cool this was like a callback to the the tour movie um this tour movie was really fun i also it was the fifth taylor swift related media that i'd watched in one day that day so i was really feeling like my brain was melting at this point um but it's it's pretty great um I think like you uh, are going to say, it's insane that Wonderland isn't on there. Um, there's, uh, I think overall though, that um, that concert is like so great. And so like, it's very intro to Swift. However, the editor does need jail time. It is horrendous. Um, I had heard rumors that the, the editing was really bad on this. And I was like, ah, it can't be that bad, especially the opening couple scenes. It is like every other shot, every other line is a different shot and a different like movement. And it's just like so erratic. Um, it's very disappointing because it should be her best one. Um, yeah, I mean, this is one of my favorite albums. We listened to it. I was at your re-release party for it. Like, I really love this album and the tour itself, I think, looks really good. The movie, I think, is awful. I think the movie is, like, really genuinely quite terrible. The editing is bad, but also just the direction. There's so much time spent with her being like, my celebrity friends. And then you blink. <laughs> and then she's singing Frozen. And it's like, what is happening? Like, where? just show me the fucking tour. And then they don't even, like, the one criticism about the tour. And I know it's a surprise song for some. Where the fuck is Wonderland, your best song? Like, <laughs> sorry. I, like, I, I think the tour looks good. But just, like, this movie was such a pain to get through. It gave me a headache immediately with the editing i couldn't even tell what was happening at times um it really was just not it i was really sad because i was like oh finally we're getting into like the really good like tours after like the can't be fun and then this was just like a blow and i i like wouldn't recommend this um, yeah the i think sad. The, in, the ending credit was my favorite part of the entire thing with her and her cats um that was all really cute um i think that yeah, we just didn't need all the celebrities, all of them, or like do it in one quick montage. Um, but like there were so many celebrities and they were playing like songs and sometimes like there are like dated songs. So you're like, OK, um, yeah, just overall kind of. It was giving like what, 2014. It was giving Oscar selfie. It was giving yeah. trying to make a moment, you know, like I get it. I appreciate it for that, but it's just not an era like I really need to return to in this way. Um, but I guess, oh, you know, it go I'm off. Sorry. Me. You mentioned Frozen and didn't mention that randomly fucking stinky cat or whatever from Friends is <laughs> <laughs> like, can you imagine, like, we're at the Eras tour, we spent thousands of dollars, and she's like, here's Lisa Kudrow singing Stinky Cat. <laughs> choices were made, you know? Bad choices. Um, um, bad choices. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I can't believe she didn't get more blowback for this. Like, not to be like, sorry, Katy Perry releases what, like, just does a little bit of cringe and is, like, ruined forever, yet... Taylor Swift can do this and is fine. Like, this was cringe. I'm sorry. Like, not in, like, a fun way. This was not, like, me. This was just cringe, and no See, one cares. Also, I feel like this is the American Idol cringe, so it feels very just, like, I'm used to it. Like, where they, like, had a celebrity, you know, guest judge and, like, all that stuff. It just felt like that to me. Katy Perry is on American Idol giving American Idol cringe as a judge, and people are laughing. They're not laughing with her. They're laughing at her. So we'll, we'll yeah, get there now, for our Katy Perry today. episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we ever do the Katy Perry episode when she does the Eras tour. Don't joke. I would be there so quickly. <laughs> well, I think that's her on. path. That's what she needs. If she can convince people nostalgia, they'll be like, oh, actually, Katy's good again. And then that's the pathway forward. Yeah, but then you'd have to get through the Bon Appetit. <laughs> <laughs> bon Appetit, baby. Um, no. I'm kind of here for it. So 
let's jump to the Eras Tour, though. For 1989, we have Style, Blank Space, Shake It Off, Wildest Dreams, Bad Blood, Dare I Say, and maybe it's because I've watched this a lot on bad live streams as I wait for surprise songs. I really like this <laughs> set list. I think this is quick. It's to the point. It gets in and out five songs. They're all bangers. Um, 1989, it's like an impossible album. I will still be listening to it and just be like, oh, every song on this is incredible. So I do want her to play the entire album. But like, if you really had to condense it, if you really had to be like, what's the best of the best? I think every song on here works and it needs to be studied. Why Shake It Off is so perfectly placed in this fucking tour every single time. And everyone will be like, oh, Shake It Off like is so dumb and like it's not really fun or they'll feel like they're above Shake It Off. But every single time it comes on with where it's placed in this tour, you're like lose yourself to it. And you're like, actually, this is the most fun song there's ever been. And you just like have to enjoy it. Um, it's like actually really impressive how perfectly placed it is. Um, but yeah, I really obviously love it. Um I assume you enjoy it also. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, we haven't really discussed yet um, the songs that were removed for the theatrical um, and that were later put back in for the Disney plus um, and wildest dreams was one of the songs cut and uh, didn't, didn't miss it when it, when it came on, I was like, this is fine. Yeah all the streams it's the one song in this that i would i would probably cut um I, honestly in general um i think they did a pretty good job i think cardigan's a weird choice to cut um over um i understand why that it's like you know clearly it was used for promotional purposes to like add it back in later but um uh the other songs were the archer and um long live were both cut for the uh, theatrical version. Um, and I think overall this works really well. Um, I think you could have a shortened um, Bad Blood. It's my thing. Uh, much in the same way that she does, you need to calm down or um, illicit affairs where you just get to the heart of it. And it's like, we're good. We're there. Um, what was your overall changes though? So we did extend it a little bit. <laughs> um, we had to add some. So we start with New Romantics because it's a great opening. Then we go to Style, Blank Space, Wildest Dreams. You include Wonderland, Shake It Off, and Bad Blood. I know we could cut Wonderland, but I just think it's really good. So I had to include it. But um, I don't know. I think it was, you know, it's long, but it would be fun. Um, Works for me. I cut Wildest Dreams. I added Wonderland. And then I want to cut bad blood i won't cut bad blood but i'll shorten it like i said and then go into new romantics which i think would be a great outro um before you get to the surprise songs i love bad blood i was so close to cutting it but then i was just like the visual of it is good with the burning house like but i do think shortening well, it i mean there's a lot of songs to be honest we could shorten but um well and it's the um tortured poets girl is the one who lights the house on fire which is fun fun little cameo we didn't notice um i love how everyone was like is that rap and i was like no didn't look like rap never did um but yeah no i think this one's great this is the classic one this is what people were expecting they got it um i think it also comes at the right time um yeah overall i think it's perfect well, let's move on to our surprise songs. And our first surprise song on the guitar <laughs> is going to be Debut. So Debut, her first... Uh, okay. So Debut, her first studio album. Um, I don't know. It's There's not a movie to go along with it. There's not an Eras Tour section for it, which I think is like very bullshit. If you're going to have one song for Speak Now, you can have one song for Debut. Um, but that's fine. Um, I, not an album I necessarily love, but one that I think obviously has very high singles. Um, and overall listening to it, I just re-listened to it because I re-listened to every Taylor Swift song for this. Um, I thought it was really enjoyable overall. Um, I will say for an Eras tour, I did can't obviously do a ton. So I just took a page off of Fearless for my version um, where I did our song, Picture to Burn, and Should Have Said No. The three big ones, you do it, you smile, and then you leave. Works for me. Um, Paul, what are your thoughts i guess <laughs> um, okay so this is um we're talking about the surprise song section and this is probably my most controversial take of this 
is I would cut one of the surprise songs and I would make a debut surprise song every um, every night. One debut song, you might get the outside, you might get, you know, teardrops on my guitar, you might get our song, you might get should have said no. But every single time she's going to walk out, she's going to go, you know, thank you for being there since the beginning. Boom, one of them. Do it. Done. We're happy. Then um, I had enough room because I did get rid of um, a song in Midnight's without replacing it. So personally, I would just like one debut, one guitar, one piano. Um, but I'm fine with her doing all piano or, you know, all piano uh, surprise songs or staying on the guitar sometimes. Doesn't matter, you know, guitar for both of them. Um, but I think you keep all the debuts as um, guitar. But I think like that's how you do it. That's a, you know, it's the surprise song, but one of them will always be debut. Um, Cause you know, there are people who keep saying like, you know, I felt like I got gypped cause I didn't get the full, you know. Um, but I think it also would be really fun because you would know you were getting a debut, but you didn't know which one. Um, I think it could just be really cool. Obviously I think, it'd be like our song and everything would be more consistent. And for people who are saying like, well, then that defeats the purpose of the surprise songs. Cause everyone's, she does fucking you're on your own kid. 300,000 times. It's like, <laughs> we're good. Like <laughs> we've lost the plot anyway. You know, like we did not stick through with the vision. I think we can just do whatever we want with the surprise songs. I'm not very concerned by it. <laughs> um, I, I did like that during the first concert when everyone didn't understand there was two surprise songs. So it was just like, you're just going to get Tim McGraw every night, which is like, you know, peace and love of that song. Such a weird choice to pick for the one for debut. Um, and then it turns out it was a surprise song. Um, well, okay. So here's like a fun thing that I've heard in terms of rumors. Um, and it's not a rumor, it's true. So the first concert, she did Tim McGraw, right? Then my concert, she did New Year's Day, which is her last one with Big Machine Records. Then the next night, when she started the International, she's saying, I forgot that you existed, which is the first one from her new. So like, that's cool. Um, I love that. That's cute. It kind of makes me think that her last concert, she's going to like, debut a new song or something insane like that and we're all gonna be like like the last night she's just like full on like here's a new song <laughs> um sure. it'll be very fun for us um but um yeah i that's my main thing is just i think that the surprise songs uh could be a lot more cohesive i do love the stories that she tells with the two songs. I think those are really cute. So, um, and we skipped over it during 1989. That was dumb. Let's talk about it now. Cause actually this is the moment it happened. Um, so Miss Taylor. Well, Alex first let's just, let's just be clear. Closing dis uh, discussion on a debut, going to the second surprise song, which oh. is just talking about the surprise songs. Fair. Now go to your little story about how you were in the <laughs> crowd for something so, cool. Um, Taylor Allison Swift walks out in a blue outfit and we all lose our minds. And she is like, um, as you know, there's uh, a bunch of new colored or new color outfits, and everyone goes wah, and she goes, and it's the eighth month wah on the ninth day, ah, and I have something that I've been wanting to show you. So if you'll look at the screen, and then they look, and then there's the 1989 pops up, and we're all like wah, and it was very fun. Um, and then she sang New Romantics, so I won. And if you go look, still, to this day, um, My Night is listed as the best surprise songs of the entire era's tour. Um, I got New Romantics, and then I got New Year's Day. It was very much specifically for me. I was thrilled. Um, I, I blew my mind that I got New Romantics, because, like, I knew it was coming. I, like, everyone was so certain, but, like, so much fun. And then... And then she sits down and does New Year's Day, which is my personal favorite song from Reputation. I was cloud nine. Um, that being said, <laughs> um, when we're talking about the surprise songs that she chose for this movie, 
I I am so confused by this these choices. Um, so the songs are um, our song, great, fine. You're on your own, kid. Makes perfect sense. Those are good. Sure. Then, <laughs> Death by a Thousand Cuts. Um, I can see you. Yep. Maroon, and yep. you are in love. It was a choice. And I understand the choice because was this in Sydney as well? The 1989? I believe so. I wanted to save it. She goes, when I say, you can see it in the silence, I want you to say silence. When you see it, I say, you can see it on the way home, I want you to say way home. She's like, I want to do this like echo thing. Okay, very cute. Do not not just explain that to your audience because you know what happened? There's like 10 people no doing that. it. <laughs> like you're watching it and you're like, seven people knew the assignment that was inherent in you doing uh, You Are In Love. Uh, cause it was like, you watch it and you can hear like a couple people going like way home. And it's like, that's cute, but just have everyone do it. If you'd had 70,000 people doing it, that would have been iconic. That would have been so impressive. Just doing it and like assuming people are going to know your lore, um, for a surprise song specifically is, is insane to me. Um, so that was like really disappointing. Um, also I don't like you were in love. I understand that the girlies like it. Um, if I was going to do it, if I'm going to choose a ballad from 1989, I guess I'm going with clean because at least like the girls love it. You know, I'm, I'm just, I don't like you or I'm love. It's like, especially that it comes after Wonderland every single time Wonderland ends. I'm like, Oh, here we go. I do like when she says you're my best friend. I do enjoy that moment, but that's not, you know, <laughs> um, I think they're fine. I don't know. They're fine choices. I They're not, I don't know, like even Death by a Thousand, I don't know. They're all like fine. I, I Can See You is really fun. I think the rest are just like kind of uninspired. I would have preferred like Getaway Car. Or I don't know, just something a little bit more iconic, especially like if we're going to weirdly work them into the film, like not even edit them in. And like, I just don't it's really all, oh. see a ton for him. Also, my main critique of the entire um, movie what do you mean you added the men at the end, but also kept in our song and you're on your own kid again? Why? And then people will be like, well, so they can have the acoustic section and it's just a collection that you can watch separate. Cool. Do that in the acoustic collection. Don't put it at the end of the movie because I'm watching it with my friend last night um, and we're like, our song again? We're like, okay. And then... <laughs> We're listening and we're like, okay, I guess this means you're on your own kids coming up. And like the fact that it ended on you're on your own kid right after you'd heard you're on your own kid. And regardless of if you love you're on your own kid, I do. Um, just felt like a repetitious in a weird way that I don't understand who's, who's that for? <laughs> no one. Um, but yeah, I love that. I love that we got a vault track. I don't know if that was the right vault track to choose. Um, so you got New Romantics and New Year's Day. I got I uh, No Places and King of My Heart. I think King of My Heart would have been cute for the King movie. of My Heart would have been cute. I like that. Um, Exile would have been great for... Sure. Um, I don't think that they expected that people would have sang it like that. I also think that she should have just tested some out in previous uh, cities and then said, fuck it, and done it for the movie. Who cares? Who cares if you're, you know changing up your little rule that you eventually blow up. She could just uh, say, Oh, I messed up a little bit guys. So I have to redo it. I can yeah. redo it again. Like, I don't know it's easy um, to smudge that. And that's why she it. should have done right where you left me. Um, no lies detected. No <laughs> oh. lies detected fall. I, okay. Here's my other thing. Why did they have to be those LA sh shows? Why could we not just have like a bunch of surprise songs from like various shows? Give me Haunted. Give me Wonderland. Give me 60 of them. I don't care if they're shot as well as the movie. Who cares? Just like talk. Put them even up. Even just put them on the extras of Disney yeah. Plus or like just something. I don't know. Yeah. Like, and I don't think it's that hard. Album. Thank you. I don't know where that. I thought for sure. Like, um, 
when it released uh, the weird time on Disney Plus, I was like, oh, that's what's going to be announced. Was not announced. But yeah, I um, thought it was going to be a surprise song and fly out album. Um, and that it was going to be uh, RSD first, not RSD exclusive. Um, so you get it, and then like in a year they release it. Um, would have been very cool. Um, but uh, so she finishes her surprise songs. But what does she do? Oh, dives. She dives. And okay, I will say that I think that the red dress was the wrong decision for the dive in the way it's shot in the movie. I love it in the thing. It literally people constantly think she got shot like in the the storyline because like she falls in and then you just see this red puddle. Um, I probably would have gone with the green. I think would have been nice. Um, or the yellow. Um, personally, I wish it could have been the blue. Um, I understand why she saved it, but you could have just done that one and then gone back to it. I don't care. I don't care. No one will remember. Um, especially you did so many new outfits. Um, uh, yeah, I I think that um, in general, uh, that's one of the weirdest choices. Although I love the dive. I also think the dive is um, not amazingly edited it's my it's another one of my moments where i'm like "Mm." because you like dives but you don't watch it like i would rather see it with the hole and then watch her dive you know and they cut away to like a fan for a second it's weird um oh by the way before we move on to surprise songs i just felt very uh happy for one of those random girlies who shows up in the surprise songs um like uh, reaction shots I am sure they were like oh my god like after all that time like you're not going to be in it you're not in it and then all of a sudden it's your big ass face um, very thrilled for them uh, I think it was call it what you or not call it what you want um, I can see you um, I think was when I saw it and I was like elf <laughs> you um, yeah well let's go to midnight it's the last the last stop on the journey of the heiress tour um, so Midnight's is her 10th studio album. It came out in 2022. Um, I got a text message from you that it was okay. And I went to go listen to it and I was like, oh, I kind of fuck with this actually. Um, I really liked Antihero immediately. Um, and then, uh, from there it just kind of like blew up for me. Um, I was not as big enough of a fan to understand the whole 3 a.m. thing that would have probably that if that ever happens in some way again will end my life um it sounds very fun very excited for the swifties who got to do it um get a whole ass another album um i also am of the opinion that um some of the songs that are in the 3 a.m. should be in the main one and i think it's very strange there's some choices in this one. Um, I love Midnight's. I am a Midnight's defender. I think Midnight's sort of got an album of the year. I think it's so good. That being said, there are some songs on there that I'm like, hmm. And not Sweet Nothing. I know you're thinking Sweet Nothing. I love Sweet Nothing. Uh, every single time I listen to that, like, Paul McCartney-ish kind of sound, and then finding out it's about Paul and Linda McCartney, kind of, maybe. Um, great. Love it. Um there is no movie with eras or uh, with uh, Midnight's, unfortunately, um, which I think there will be eventually. That was the other thing I was expecting. I was really worried that they were going to announce a documentary and we were going to have to binge a documentary real quick um, about the tour. But I think they're going to save that for the final album and it'll be about the eras tour. And then also um, the um, re-records because she'll have finished by then. Um, it'll be very nice. It'll be very cute. Um, yeah, I have no problems with this one. Um, I have one song I would remove, but outside of that, I'm, uh, it's, it has to do something very specific. And I think that works. Oh, the other thing, um, and I have one that I merge, but I want to hear yours first. 
Yeah, I mean, well, I'll just say quickly, I do like this part of the concert. I think it works very well as the ending point with Karma. I do think Lavender Haze, of course, is like a great start to the concert, it would be. Um, but I get with the era format, I think this is, I would always keep this as the end. Um, I'm going to cut this down a lot, mainly because I added stuff above and I wanted to keep it similar numbers. I'm only going to do Lavender Haze, Bejeweled, Antihero, and Karma. Um, again, just focus it down so I can expand like 1989. Um, but I'm sure you disagree with that. What would you, and you're lucky I have four. I almost took out Bejeweled, but I was like, that dance is too fun. Um, so what would you have? I cut Mastermind, but I keep um, Lavender Haze, Antihero, Midnight Rain, Vigilante shit. And then I go from Vigilante shit straight into a mashup where you start with Bejeweled and then change it over to Karma, figure out how to do that. Um, because it's they're, the, they're very similar in terms of the, the like, uh, the yeah. dance that you're doing. So I think that it also just gets people up. I think it's so weird to go from Bejeweled to Mastermind. Um, I have seen the concert multiple times. I've listened to that album multiple times. Every time Mastermind starts, I'm like, what song is this? Oh, right, 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 right. It is such a, like, vault track. <laughs> um, uh, I love it, but it is very vaulty. I'll give you that. Like, uh, no, I think it's really cute, but um, I mean, when you have, you know, so many songs that are like really fantastic and then uh, you have Mastermind on there, I would love, I mean, I just wish there was like another good, like fun song from the, like, give me a woulda, coulda, shoulda or a Paris. I like Paris. Um, but I understand that uh, you can't really do Paris with, um, since that's more about Joe. Um, and I think a lot of this, especially in Lover and Midnight's, we are seeing like, and even uh, Invisible String. I think we're seeing her not being particularly fair to the songs based on how they affect Joe, because even like, most of the um even the reputation songs aren't really the joe songs like um it's it's pretty interesting to see overall but yeah i think it's good i think it's like it's a solid one uh i you need vigilante shit sorry you can't cut it um it's so good it's cringy it's not good it's, it's like so it's good. not not for me not for this gay boy sorry so with that we're ending um, the individual parts. And let's just go to an overall talk quickly about the Ares tour. Um, is there a version you like the best? What are your overall thoughts? I will say quickly, as someone who obviously had a lot of fun in person, saw it in the theater, had so much fun in the theater, um, and then watched it at home multiple times. Well, actually, I ended last year. I forgot New Year's. Um, I watched it mm -hmm. um, with you. Um I love this. I, I think it's her best concert. I think it's her best concert film. Um when you take so many bops, so many hits and put them in this package that really comes together, I'm so happy she did it as individual eras instead of just randomly spursing them throughout. Like, I really think this is such a wonderful celebration of Taylor Swift, the nostalgia of each individual album, um, each individual sound coming together. I, I really appreciate this. Um, and I'm just so happy Paul is still there. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it there as tour, obviously. Oh, yeah. That was the other thing we didn't discuss. Um, she has a couple like background people and then uh, Paul, her guitarist, um, and they like are in it when they show up and then they just stay. Um, there's people that uh, come and go. Um, we didn't, emo boy. We didn't talk about boy. Hot Topic boy at all. It was so funny. Um, yeah, no, I think it is really great. Um, and with the exception of Cardigan. I'm going to say that theatrical works better the first time. I think this is great. This is fun. This is the more accurate version. But having seen this one, I am like, no, it's good that you like uh, cut it down. I think that was smart. Um, I honestly probably would have cut it down a little shorter um, for the theatrical. Um, gut evermore and folklore a little bit. But outside of that, no, I think it, it works really well. I think it's, you know. It's exactly what it was meant to do. It'll be very interesting to see how she moves on from this. 
um, especially with Tortured Poets coming up and all this thing. Like, I don't think she changes the set list because I think there's no reason to. So reading about this. She changed the set list. All it does is um, make it to where the scalpers make more money. She doesn't. She sold every ticket. So, like, um, that's disappointing. But also, I believe that's going to be the case. Um, I do think that we'll just get a lot of surprise songs with Tortured Poets for a while. Um, I could see one or two songs changing. Like, when she added Long Live, I could see, like, a little change like that. I don't think she's going to change it hugely. Um Going back to Eros Tour, I do think that theatrical works best. I also just think like kind of the theater is like a perfect place to really watch this film. Like an Adobe Cinema recliner is ideal. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think overall, I don't expect a lot of change. If she does, hey, if she wants to change it all up and do another US leg and come back to like SoCal, I will take it. But um, I don't expect that. Yeah. But we'll see. But also, like, it is interesting. I wonder, like, what she does next as far as live touring. Cause it does feel weird to be like, she's going to go back to just a traditional, like, you know, blank world tour. I'm very curious about that and how I, like she moves on from this. I kind of feel like she might do something similar to, um, lover fest actually. Um, and she'll do so but she'll do it for like a month. She'll just do like a residency. And it's just like, Seventy thousand dollars or seventy thousand people every night, and it would be sold out every single night. You would go 10, 15 times. Um, if she goes to Vegas, if she does the Vegas residency, number one, there's no way she's possibly ever going to do that because the tickets would be like literally uh, stabbing people. Yeah. But um, we will be fighting, Paul. We will be there. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we will be um fighting to get into that oh, casino yeah, wherever obviously. it's held. So just know if that's happening, go to, <laughs> we're going to war and I expect you on the front lines. Um, so for that question of the week, we're just going to ask very quickly, what's your favorite Taylor Swift live performance? We watched a bunch of them. What do you love? That is a live performance. Um, I think I'm going to go with her, uh, her performance of Riptide from uh vance joy which is in the bbc um live lounge uh it is so fun to hear her do that kind of song it's a deeper cut it's not like a classic um and it's just really great i as an aside i think that the live lounges are some of like the greatest things we do right now and um we need more of them constant all the time like uh if you're a big taylor swift fan uh teddy swims who is like all the way up the charts right now um did a cover of cruel summer and instead of it being like a fun pop song it's a very sad gay ballad even though i don't think he's gay but he keeps the pronouns the same so you're listening to it and it's a guy just like very depressed that his boyfriend's closeted um very funny um but really good uh yeah the live lounges in general but i i love her version of riptide which is why i bought the bootleg it's on its way um i bought it just for that <laughs> Sure. Um, uh, live lounges are great. There's a really great one. Speaking of Bon Appetit by Katy Perry, where a guy's covering that and he gets to the world's best cherry pie or whatever that line is. And it's very funny. Um, but I agree. Like Miley Cyrus has done some great ones of those. Love it. Uh, for my answer, I'm going to go False God from SNL. I really like False God. I don't know. I like she's had a ton of great performances, obviously. Um, and I'm sure you could pick like Ready for It from Reputation World Tour. That's probably my number two. But like False God SNL, I think it's a very good performance. And it makes me sad that we're never going to see it performed live like that probably ever, but you know, that's fine. Um, so with that said, that's going to do it for today's eras to our episode. But if you're a Swifty and if you're like, Oh my God, now like Clappercast is just going to talk about boring movies. I don't care about for the rest of time. Just know there's at least one other episode coming your way. Cause next month in honor of her new album, Paul, we're going to be back on here talking about Taylor Swift's acting credits. Um, we're going through all of them. It's going to be an adventure. Probably not very good, but you know what? We'll see. I, and maybe we'll have I am very some excited, new favorites. Uh, <laughs> because I have only watched a few of them, actually. You know, usually we'll do these kind of things. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I've seen most of what we're talking about. Um, no, this is, uh, this is, I've seen Cats. And I think that's, I honestly think that's the only one of hers I've seen. So like, you know, I haven't oh. even seen the Lorax. 
it's not sad you started with the best one so now it's all just downhill from here i know um i will say olivia rodrigo on her tour flying around on a fucking moon just like she does in cats taylor that could have been you on this tour <laughs> where's the cats era oh. no one talks about this um no i actually i do kind of think that it's uh, a little baloney that she's not doing um beautiful ghosts or mccavity or carolina or um any of these like deep cut like movie songs like you sure. don't need people i understand that also she might save beautiful ghosts for um london yes but well, i also and wonder if like, and london boy back to back come on now no 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 oh okay you want to bet money right now the song choices for london are going to be london boy followed by so long london and people are going to be miserable they're going to be so sad because it's going to be a sad version of london boy and then it's going to go to and i personally think that she's not going to sing it in present tense i think it's going to be you know i loved a london boy and it's going to be the whole thing in past tense and everyone's going to be very sad it's gonna be great i'm gonna enjoy that live stream so much Oh, and it'll be great because it's going to be at like 10 a.m. So I can actually watch it. Um, I'm not going to bet against it because you're right. But as long as it's not a mashup, I'm here for it. I just need her to stop doing these mashups. We're so far removed I, from what these okay. were supposed to be. I don't care that you only go to these countries like once every 10 years. They get one song and then you move on. That's the um, gimmick. I My thing I can't handle with the uh, mashup surprise songs is that poor girl. And I've not been able to find her again. But she was like, I'm doing a um, every single surprise song. I'm making a little quilt. And she was like, oh, she started doing mashups. I'll just, I have this one rib- ribbon that's all these different colors. And I'll use that for every surprise song that has a mashup. And then it just went full mashup right after that. And I was like, the saddest part is, like, she definitely came up with something else. But she definitely has like four squares. <laughs> just like before she realized that this was not going to work. Um incredible well with that that's gonna do it for today's episode thank you everyone for joining us on this era celebration paul where can we find you on your very busy and active social media accounts um at price like tag on twitter instagram and letterboxd hey i started writing on letterboxd again a movie uh got fire into my loins to uh write and then also um i just watched the movie hundreds of beavers um which also uh got me excited to write i haven't written the review yet of that because i was watching so much taylor swift but um yeah no i that one was really fun so i'm excited to like get back into writing a little bit more i fell off because like i was seeing every movie and i was like i don't i don't have an opinion and you don't have to sometimes you don't have to write a review if it's going to make everything fall apart just don't write the review or like just write like bad yeah, well, sometimes you're just sitting in the theater, and like I realized this a while ago. I was sitting in the theater, and I was just thinking about what I was going to say in my review after, and I was like, I'm not enjoying the movie I'm watching. So it was like a oh issue. yeah, but it, like sometimes it's just like I sure I don't want to waste my time, especially when it's like an indie film, like a Love Lives Bleeding, right? Where it's like sure it's popular right now, is it going to stay popular forever? Who knows? But are you going to waste time writing a review that like probably no one reads? Um, don't. That's my advice here's the truth also for everyone listening you don't have to watch every movie i've seen 10 new releases this year it's perfect don't watch them you know when something bad comes out just don't spend two hours watching it just watch all of taylor swift's concert films instead (laughs) you could be watching speak now (laughs) yeah um it's also funny like um i did not realize how many hours of taylor swift content i had watched um it was it was a lot it was it was brutal yeah it's funny this week i watched every single concert from Taylor swift and i watched every single rocky movie so it's been a weird dichotomy of watches but you know that's fine um if you want to hear my thoughts on the entire rocky franchise you can find me on twitter at bp underscore movie reviews letterbox just carson tamar thank you so much for listening if you're here because you love taylor swift and you happen to also love movies stay tuned not only do we have a ton of old episodes but we also have grave of the fireflies review coming soon um and if you don't like movies very valid but you like taylor swift stay around next month uh for our taylor swift acting special so for that thank you so much for listening goodbye